there, we get thunder, lightning, fucking hoorah. At the end of this 2017, we got Owen Salmon in the band. He was a massive lift, in personality-wise, because he's, just, he's gas, but like, in playable -wise, playability, musicianship, whatever you want to call it, it was a great lift to us. If someone said, no, you're going to be in a band, a trad folk band in Thurlis, <laughs> and you're going to go to Disney World and you're going to play music for four months, uh, I wouldn't have believed that. I would have said, what are you talking about? <laughs> Owen joined the band in around December of 17 and we flew to Florida in May of 18. So that's the bones of not even six months, barely the bones of six months. And Owen Salmon was on a plane with us to, to Florida. Yeah, so he was he was fresh meat. He fell into we, a dream. Yeah, we used to joke he fell into a dream situation. January or February, we had met the lady who, who has now become our booking agent, Pauline. She invited us, she gave us a message on Facebook and asked if we were interested in coming up to her, her jetty jam. Uh, we, met, we met our booking agent up in Cavan, uh, first time meeting her. Uh, Owen was only in the band a couple of months, I was only just over a year, year and a half in the band. We went up, did our slot, played our originals. She told us then at the end of the night, I'm putting you forward for uh, a trip to Florida. Self and Owen and Shelley looked at each other when, we said, when she said it and just rolled her eyes and go, here we go again, someone's going to offer us this or offer us that. And say they know someone in such and such a country and they can get us a gig there. Uh, I think Azerbaijan got mentioned a few times of all places. I'll get you to go here, I'll get you to Denmark, I'll bring you to Holland. And uh, Canada and America and England and fuck all is going to happen. <laughs> I remember specifically she said, it's like I have a possible gig across the pond. And I remember thinking, oh, we're going to England. And he's like, no, no, America. The uh, booking, one of the booking promoters for Raglan wants to see you. And we were like, ah. And she was going, yeah, this is, this is happening. I told you it was happening. And I was thinking, okay. <laughs> a man called David Hayes is quite a busy, fairly well-respected person in the music world and worked with a lot of, a lot of amazing cool talented people um, came to came here to town and met us and um, came into Hickey's and he had us set up our gear and just kind of perform of, I don't know a Sunday afternoon there was nobody inside in the pub and Ollie was okay with it and, and first song in Mr. In set Sean Brooks drink we ploughed on and didn't stop just stay going do what we normally do at a gig and just Play along until Sean at the same finish went back, banged straight back into where we were at the song and continued on from there. And David Hayes said after that that the fact that we did not stop when the string was broken proves you have it. And he just took a video of it and sent it back to whoever his people. And he said that he'd come over and to see us and properly for a gig. So we, we set up a gig in Bowles and invited. I suppose everybody out and he was kind of banking on that and uh, he, he was there and he, he said yeah we'll do it we'll do it with them and we we were booked to go over there for initially three months in the summer of 2018 which turned into four I mean it was so surreal for that to happen uh, like there we were still we were very uh, we were in disbelief over the whole thing we didn't think this thing was like what well, this is actually happening or going to America for four months to play music, are you kidding me? It was cool because Owen, Owen Salmon wasn't in the band too long. So, and it was the first time that the three of us, myself, Sean, or, or Owen Shelley had done anything like that. So, so we were going into it together, into a new thing. Um, it wasn't just like, oh, we, we're bringing the new lad on. It's, it wasn't like that at all. It's like we, had, we were all facing a, a fairly big challenge all together. About six months later, we're getting on a flight, flights paid for, visas paid for, everything ready to go. It was odd. We became taxpayers. Yeah, we became taxpayers Fucking that day. Fucking mad shit that my first, My first ever job was technically for Disney. Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. And off we went to Florida and loved every minute of it. We played six nights a week for four months straight. We 
got to really actually know each other and really actually play with each other properly. And it really helps you kind of realise, right, this is a, a proper thing you can actually spend your life doing and if, if you get good enough at it and you meet the right people in the right places, you can actually make a proper living out of it and share your music with everyone. Well, Ragnar Road is... It's an Americanized version of an Irish pub, essentially. You wouldn't find an Irish pub that large in Ireland. Big, huge place, a big stage, and you're looked after, and all you do is you come in and you plug in. And you're on in-ears and in-ear mo wireless monitors and stuff like that. So you can walk around the pub and you can play it. And that's kind of what they encouraged us to do, was to really interact with the crowd there. playing every day. We were refining our sound, we were becoming tighter as a band, we were becoming better musicians in our own regards. It just all went by so quick, but it was such a, f it was probably the, the most fun time I ever had playing music was, was that four months. From sound checking at four o'clock in the morning and to Literally, the last gig where we were up on stage with some very talented musicians and dancers. There's actually videos of it up on YouTube of that final night. And just the general emotion of the whole night was just something to, that I'll never, I, I'll never forget. That was something else. I, there was such a buzz in the room that night. And there was a kind of a little tradition over there <clears throat> that if it was someone's last night, Everyone else, all the other musicians, who would usually be gone home by the time we played because they'd been there slaving away all day. Um, if it was someone's last night, they'd stay out, and they stay, everyone stayed out that night. And a lot of the people that we'd met that time came back, and all of them, it was just, just a wonderful night. By the end of it, there was about 30 of us on the stage singing, was, I don't know what we did, it was 500 miles or something. <laughs> it was brilliant. If I could relive one night, one gig, I'd, I'd relive that one. That was that was superb. The Irish are happy with what's in front of them, whereas the Americans, when we announced that we're going back for Paddy's Day, they want to know the dates. They want to know when we're going to be there, even though we're only going to be there for four days. There are people booking holidays, booking flights, booking times coming from every corner of that massive country abroad, they're flying in to our two-hour gig. In Ireland, it's like, oh yeah, we came from Waterford. We, drive, we drove like an hour to sea. It's like, oh, wow. But then you hear in America, it's like, oh yeah, we decided to push our flight a day ahead so that we would see you guys gigging again. You're like, really? No way. Or we came back. We were here once, you know, and we came back and we're here for a few nights. And you're like, what? We've seen people go haywire and that's pretty cool. We saw people break dance one night in Raglan. A couple of lads came in and they like chairs and tables were cleared and they started and they began break dancing to like some set of jigs. It was the most wrong thing ever, but it was wonderful. Yeah. 